Good evening to everyone. Trust you men have had a great day on Father's Day, and likewise you ladies as well. And children, hey, everybody's ready to head to Bill Rice Ranch, right? All excited about that? Had your meeting tonight? Just one week away. I happened to run into David's mother the other day at the grocery store. And uh, is she back here? Is David back here? He is? Oh, there you are. Yeah, did your mom tell you that she saw me at the grocery store? She did. Anyway, and she said, boy, David just can't wait. He's been talking about everything, everything. Bill Rice Ranch. He can't wait for, for another week to go to the Bill Rice Ranch. Right, Dave? And uh, anyway, I'm glad all of you feel that way and anxious to go to the ranch. It's an exciting place. Next week at this time, who knows where you will be. With that many people, listen, with that many people stopping at a rest stop to go to the restroom, oh, boy, I pity I just pity the driver. <laughs> That's a whole lot of people need to go in and use the restroom and, or, and, and anything else. You know, the, they stop at eating places, come all of it. That's a lot of people to have to take time out. Everybody gets their little piece of time out, right? And uh, boy, oh, boy. But what an exciting time and uh, camp time. Camps are always great. And Bill Rice Ranch, one week from tonight, they'll be way down the highway. And uh, the rest of us will be right here, right? I want to read from Proverbs, chapter number 7, once again. Verse number 1, My son, keep my words, and lay up my commandments uh, with thee. Keep my commandments, and live, and my law as the apple of thine eye. Let's pray together. The precious and kind Heavenly Father, and truly you are precious and kind. We're so grateful for your love for your goodness, for your mercy, for your provision, for your protection. And truly, as the Bible states it, that you pity us like a father with his children. And that becomes evident even on a daily basis. When we back up or take a look at that, we realize how good you have been to us, each and every one. Lord, our bodies become elderly and, and uh, things go on in life that are not always, not always pleasant to the flesh. But we know in all instances, your grace is sufficient, and you're merciful, and you are good. And thank you for being such a great father. And we come gladly tonight to worship you. We're glad you're alive. And as we have studied on Wednesday nights, all these people, thousands of gods that these people have had through the Bible days, throughout more modern time. But in the end, we come to realize by the various attributes and by the word of God itself, there is no God except the O God. We're so glad we had the privilege to get to know you, to take you as our Savior. But likewise, to gather together on this particular Sunday night to worship you, the only true living God, the one that truly is alive and cares about each of us by name. We pray that your blessings to be upon this service. As we sing, Lord, speak to our hearts. We pray that you bless the offering. Bless uh, Brother James as he preaches and all that goes on tonight. We pray that you would just meet with us and help us, Lord to know your presence and manifest yourself to us. And I put, pray that you put your hand of blessing upon this service. I pray that most of all you'd be honored, glorified, your name would be lifted up above every name. And now, Lord, bless us, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to get our hymn books and turn to 389. Welcome to all those here in the auditorium, those watching the streaming. We welcome you as well. And uh, let me invite all in the auditorium to get a hymn book. Tell it to Jesus, 389. Let's all stand. Everyone standing, please. Sing it out. Are you weary? Are you heavy hearted? Tell it to Jesus. Tell it to Jesus. Are you grieving over joys departed? Tell it to Jesus alone. Tell it to Jesus, tell it to Jesus, he is a friend that's well known. You've no other such a friend or brother, tell it to Jesus alone. Do the tears flow down your cheeks unbidden, tell it to Jesus, tell it to Jesus. Have you sins that two men's eyes are hidden? Tell it to Jesus alone. 
Tell it to Jesus, tell it to Jesus. He is a friend that's well known. You know other such a friend or brother. Tell it to Jesus alone. Do you fear the gathering clouds of sorrow? Tell it to Jesus, tell it to Jesus. Are you anxious? What shall be tomorrow? Tell it to Jesus alone. Tell it to Jesus, tell it to Jesus. He is a friend that's well known. You've no other such a friend or brother. Tell it to Jesus alone. Are you troubled at the thought of dying? Tell it to Jesus, tell it to Jesus. For Christ's coming kingdom are you sighing? Tell it to Jesus alone. Tell it to Jesus, tell it to Jesus. He is a friend that's well known. You've no other such a friend or brother. Tell it to Jesus alone. And the awesome thing when you tell it to Jesus, he's not going to tell anybody else, is he? And so many times we like to share things because we have burdens on our heart or we're excited about some news or we don't know what to do about something and we tell somebody. And a lot of times ones try to tell others just because they're concerned about it. But thank the Lord when we tell it to Jesus, he helps us. He doesn't tell it to anybody else and it's between him and us and he helps us through it, doesn't he? Well, let's sing our chorus 209, His Grace is Sufficient for Me. Let's sing on the chorus there, 209. Oh, His grace is sufficient for me, and His love is abundant and free, and what joy fills my soul just to know, just to know that His grace Sufficient for me. Great singing, you may be seated. When you are doing a great job singing here tonight. Appreciate that so very much. I want to meet with the trustees right after the service tonight, just for a few moments, in the choir loft. And so you gentlemen that are here, if you could meet with me, just we won't take a lot of time and let you get home, get to bed. I know some of you old codgers, you got to get home and get to bed. And uh, so anyway, we'll meet just for a few moments. But very important meeting for sure. So we'll meet right after in the choir out there on this evening. Wednesday night, this week, Debbie and I are going to go away for two or three days. In the middle of the week, it's our anniversary on Wednesday. And so uh, we're going to be gone for a couple of days. Brother James will be around. He'll be preaching there on Wednesday night, taking care, looking after all the needs here. Uh, the ministry for those couple of days. Uh, Thursday, it's still winning, of course. And then we already talked about the Bill Rice Ranch, the meeting there tonight. I know got it all squared away, right? All the needs and things, and everybody knows what's going on with that. I do want to remind you, two weeks from today, we'll be having a great patriotic service. Looking forward to that and the time to give our emphasis and attention to our wonderful country, the United States of America. And uh, music can all will be geared that way. But that day also, as we've typically done on that day, July 2nd this year, uh, we'll have church, go out and have lunch, and uh, then come back in here at 2 o'clock. So we won't have night service. Two weeks from tonight, there would not be the regular night service, but instead we'll have that at 2 o'clock. If you're out there watching the streaming tonight, uh, you may keep that in your mind also. Two weeks from tonight, July 2nd, church will begin for us here in the auditorium at 2 o'clock. So keep that in mind, and that'll be two weeks from today. Looking forward to all of that. Campy man, you want to say something about camp again? i tell you what, go ahead and say something about camp, and just have the ushers come then, if you would. All right. On July the 10th, the Monday after the 4th, we'll have our, our Camp Emanuel. Looking forward to a great week. That's for all children going into first grade up through sixth graders. So this, these ones in sixth grade get to go to the Bill Rice Ranch and Camp Emanuel. 
And uh, so that's always exciting for them and looking forward to a great week. Excited about the theme and the idea that we're doing. And there'll be lots of games and Bible stories and crafts and snacks and all that good stuff. There's registration forms on the little table over there. And so please pick them up. Maybe you have a neighbor that has a child that age group that wants their board and uh, they want to do something fun for the for a week in the summer. And uh, we've had ones before several years ago. Uh, the mayor's, uh, a couple of the mayor's children came from probably eight, ten years ago. And two of those little girls that week got saved while they were here at camp. And so they're going to heaven someday and all because of Camp Emmanuel. And other great decisions have been made. We have four campers of the week. We have four trophies. They came in actually this week. And so we're excited about that. And so that's July 10th. You fill out the registration and $25 anytime between now and then. And I'll uh, be praying much about that. Ushers, please come forward for the offering. And I'll go ahead. And they're right now doing that. All right. Morgan and Reagan, come on up. And they're going to be playing our offertory for us tonight. They're practicing a lot the last couple of days. And uh, working together here as a team. So they're going to play for us during the offering. Dear Lord, we thank you so much for all you've done for us, for all the wonderful food we've eaten today, for the church building that we can come and worship you in. And Lord, thank you for our families, for our fathers this day. Thank you, Lord, for, uh, Lord, just the opportunity to pray and to worship you. Thank you that we can give to you in this offering. Help the girls as they play right now, Lord. I know they've worked hard. Just calm their nerves and help them play for you. In Jesus' name, amen. of Jesus. And uh, great job. Appreciate you girls doing that for us tonight. Please turn to 395. 395, two verses. It's entitled, Just Pray. Great song. I like the tune of this song, the words. Maybe a new song. We've done this only a few times, I think, in the congregation here. Um, but I think you'll like it. So let's all stay here, please, and sing it out. Just Pray. I was discouraged when no answer came For I'd pray for years and I still saw no change I was ready to give up thinking what can I do But when I prayed the last time God's power broke through as big as God is. Prayer is just as strong as God is strong. Prayer can reach as far as God can reach. Don't ever give up. Just pray. Just pray. Don't ever give up. Just pray. A means to the throne of the God whose potential is yet to be known. There is no limit as to what God can do. So let's keep on praying. 
he's listening to you. And prayer is just as big as God is. Prayer is just as strong as God is strong. Prayer can reach as far as God can reach. Don't ever give up. Just pray, just pray. Don't ever give up. Just pray. Great singing. You may be seated. All right. This morning we had Melissa Ford singing for us. And in the meantime, this afternoon, she got married. So now my paper has Melissa Schwarz. So, uh, Schwarz. And so uh, she got married today. And it all went well, I guess. And so, anyway, Melissa is going to come and sing. Brother James will then preach. tree 
Hanging on dark Calvary, that is my only plea. It's through the blood. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. Amen. Thank the Lord for the blood of Jesus Christ. Where would you and I be tonight without the blood of Jesus? And I love that song. I've heard it hundreds of times, and every time I just rejoice in the fact that Jesus saved my soul. And I know the awful things I've done and things you've done. This song talks about it, but it's through the blood. And, uh, boy, that's a good one. Thank you for singing that for us. And uh, my poor mom over there, you see something that we have in common we get these coughing spells. There's nothing we can do. She's had this cough for weeks. I had it back in February where I lost my voice. It was coughing like that. And it's terrible. And I think she passed it down to me, but I appreciate her playing through all that. And I hope you've had a great Father's Day. Happy Father's Day to all of you men. And I hope you've had a good day. And I enjoyed what I got to do. Got to spend some time with my dad and mom down by the Good old Susquehanna River, watched the Hiawatha go up and down. We ate down there, enjoyed some time this afternoon down there. And uh, I got a, a plaque, I guess you call it that. It says, Girl Dad, and I'm proud of it. And I put it in my office and a picture of me sitting there and uh, my four girls. It wasn't our, well, it wasn't actually us, but it looks like us. And uh, from the back and the way our hair looks sitting there. And uh, so I really appreciate that. And I had some office. And I'm thankful that God's allowed me to be a father. And uh, I spoke today to the children about that sum and about Abraham and Sarah. And not every lady and man, God's allowed that to happen, to be a father and mother. So I hope you enjoy your children today. And I hope you've had a great day, you fathers. Well, I'm going to speak on fathers here in a little bit about our Heavenly Father. But these are what some famous fathers said, I should say, what some fathers said about their famous sons and some things that went on. Over the centuries, fathers have given their children plenty of good advice. Michelangelo's father said, Mike, can't you paint on the walls like other children? Do you have any idea how hard it is to get that stuff off the ceiling? So once that Gold, Goldilocks' father said this, I've got a bill here for broken chair from the Bear family. Do you know anything about this, Goldie? Albert Einstein's father said, but Albert, it's your senior picture. Can't you do something about your hair? Styling gel, mousse, something? Thomas Edison's father, of course I'm proud that you invented the electric light bulb. Thomas, now turn off that light and get to bed. Humpty Dumpty's father said, Humpty, if I've told you once, I've told you a hundred times not to sit on that wall. But would you listen to me? No. And so, but listen, I'm so glad for the advice that my dad has given to me over the years. And a lot of times, maybe it wasn't advice. It was just the arm around my shoulder or just uh, prayers. Um, but definitely have given, has given me great counsel and love, and I appreciate that. Another little story here about a father and son, about a pastor, actually. A pastor ex explained how Saturday was a day to get things done around their house because of work, family, and churches, and responsibilities. Just a few weeks ago, he and his youngest son, Jeff, Jeff Schroll back there, no, his youngest son, Jeff, who is six years old, had just finished mowing the lawn and were putting things away. The pastor thought that this would be a terrific opportunity to rest and spend a few, day, few minutes with his son, Jeff. The two of them crawled up on the family's trampoline and gazed up into the blue sky. With a puzzled look, Jeff turned it and asked, Dad, why are we here? And uh, I, I've, I enjoy laying on the trampoline. We used to jump on it a lot anymore. I just like laying on it, looking up and with the kids, pretty relaxing. So that's what Dad and Jeff are doing. And Jeff says, Dad, why are we here? So the pastor, the dad here, thought it would be a great teaching opportunity to explain how we are children of our Father in heaven. 
how he has sent us here because he loves us and wants to experience the things he has created for us, how he wants us to serve one another and to learn and to grow and to develop those qualities that will allow us to return to live with him someday. The father paused and asked if that had answered his question. Jeff responded, not really. The pastor then began to think how else he might be able to answer the questions when Jeff again asked, Dad, why are we here? Weren't we supposed to pick Mom up an hour ago? And so he was wondering why were they were there. It was a simple question, and Dad gave him a bunch of good Bible answers, but it wasn't what he wanted. And sometimes we try to get too philosophical with our kids, and sometimes try to teach them maybe too much, and they just want simple answers and simple truths. And I think about that sometimes with preaching to kids or in children's church or at camps. They don't care if you're a pastor, a doctorate, a master. They don't care if you know the whole Bible. They don't care about any of that stuff. They just want to know what kind of snack you're having. Is it going to be fun? And teach them a simple little truth, and they'll have a good time. Kids think a lot differently than, than us as adults do often, don't we? Well, I want to preach today. I hope this will be an encouragement to all of us on Father, but talking about our Heavenly Father, the Matthew chapter 7. Turn your Bibles to Matthew chapter 7, and the title of the message tonight is this, Good Things from the Father. Good Things from the Father. If you notice in our songs tonight, we sang, I Must Tell Jesus, and then we sang, Just Pray, and so we, talk, we sang songs about prayer because we're going to talk about prayer tonight and about how good our Father has been because of us being allowed to pray to Him. So let's start in Matthew chapter 7, and verse number 7 through verse 11. Jesus speaks and says, Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth. And to him that knocketh it shall be opened. I don't know about you, but when I've tried to memorize that verse and say it back to a teacher in school or church, that was always hard for me. Ask it, receive it, seek it, find it, knock it, open it. And uh, I think old Barry Webb did that with a puppet one time and all that wording. But anyways, it basically means the same thing that we just read in verse 7, but a little bit more into it. Um, but it says in verse 9, Or what man is there of you, whom if his son ask bread, will he give him a stone? I've tasted some biscuits that were kind of... As hard as a stone, but uh, or if he ask for a fish, will he give him a serpent? If ye then be evil and know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your Father which is in heaven give good things to them that ask him? Now, the last part of that verse, it says, How much more shall your Father, that's God, our Father, which is in heaven, give good things? To them that ask him. Good things from the Father. Let's pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for the opportunity to preach your word tonight. Thank you that we can speak from the words that Jesus spoke on prayer and this Sermon on the Mount. And Lord, I pray tonight that we'd all know that we can pray and that you, and we can ask and that you want to hear us, that you want to answer us, that you want to help us because you're our Father and you love us. You want to do so many wonderful things. I pray now the Holy Spirit would be in our midst and speak to our hearts and help us, dear Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. I looked up a thing of what makes a good father. And this was just one's opinion, but I thought this was good and, and maybe appropriate. What makes a good father? Loving and protecting his kids. Mom. When a father protects and, and his kid's mom and, and loves and protects his kid's mom, I heard one person say... The best thing you as a dad can do is love your kid's mom. So that makes a good father. What's another thing to be as a good father? Being a disciplinarian. Another thing is focusing on raising good adults, not just good kids. Uh, being Leading by example. Being a servant leader. Being supportive to his kids. Being slow to anger. Spending, the, spending time actively involved with his kids. Being a good listener. But today, I want to talk about this one, and this is something that a good father would do or be, is providing for his family. 
providing for his family, we would all say that's a very, very important job for a father or a mother, but especially a father. Now, I know we're in 2023 where so many of the uh, mothers or women, the wife, have to work. The, the situation we're in with so many things, with the financial dilemma that we're in and the expenses of living, that most homes, father and mother, have to work. But, you know, so many years ago, it was often the dad that was the only one that worked, and the mom at home Shirley did her work as she made bread and worked in the garden and made clothes and ironed and washed and did all the things and, and taught the children, raised them there in the home. But the dad was, so many years ago, that main one that provided for his family in a financial way. And maybe today he still uh, would be the main one that brings in the money. But that is one of the main jobs for me or you dads tonight is to provide for your family. And as we think about this idea of what we just read, as we as dads trying to provide or meet the needs of our children because we want to as a dad, how much greater does our Heavenly Father want to provide and meet the needs for us, His children? Jesus preached in this Sermon on the Mount, Pastor uh, Maybe a couple years he took preaching through Matthew 5, 6, and 7. And, uh, and this is now chapter 7, the last chapter of this sermon that he's preaching. And in this message, he's repeating some of what he had said. In Matthew chapter 6, Jesus uh, gives forth this model prayer we call the Lord's Prayer. He says these words to these ones, listen, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be, my, be thy name. And he goes through that whole model prayer. So he already has, has touched a lot on prayer in chapter 6. But I think he's, he emphasizes it again. He brings it back up again in chapter 7 because he knows how important that it is for God's children to communicate to the Father and to ask and seek and knock so we can find. And he gives, us, gives an example of a son that is asking his father for some food. Every father likes to help and provide for his children to give them food, what they ask. It's important that we take care of our children. Uh, Apostle Paul said in, in 1 Timothy 5, 8, as he's writing to Timothy, he said, but if any provide not for his own, especially for those of his own household, he hath denied the faith and is worse than an infidel. So any dad that would not feed his children, if it's breakfast or lunch or supper, give them something to eat and something to drink day after day after day. If the dad didn't show up for four or five days or he was there and never went out and got food and brought it and, and made sure the children were getting the proper food and drink, he is worse than an infidel. He's a loser in my boat if he doesn't take care of his children. We say, that guy's a bum. He's lazy. He's good for nothing if he can't take care of his own children. And Jesus is saying here that, you know, if a, if a son asks for a piece of bread, he's not going to give him a stone or a rock. He's going to give him what he wants. Not just bread. He maybe wants to give him the best kind of bread. If he asks for a fish, he's not going to hand him something poisonous, something that's dangerous like a serpent. Now, I'll never forget when I was at Saltmore at Crown College, I was in the lodge. It was kind of like a camp atmosphere in that dormitory in the lodge. And I remember going into the refrigerator on Sunday night when we got back from a go-home weekend and looking in the refrigerator, and there was a big container, and it was closed up. And I thought, I wonder what's in that big container, one of those big Rubbermaid totes, you know. And, uh, and, and some of the children boys came in, David and Sam and Paul. And uh, David went to be with the Lord in a vehicle accident. They were Crown College boys. Paul is a missionary in Italy today. But I, I was thinking, what's in that container? And they said, look what we caught. Look what we killed when we were in West Virginia. We shot a rattlesnake, and we're going to eat it. And so here they shot a rattlesnake, and it was in this big container. And they were planning on eating it. I don't know if they ever did. But listen, if you kids ask dad for a fish, he's not going to give you a serpent. And then Jesus says in verse 11, if you then being evil know how to give good gifts unto your children. What does he mean by that? I think Jesus is telling the whole world, telling even today all of us that we all are evil without the Lord Jesus Christ. We're all sinners, the Bible says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. There is none righteous, no, not one. The depravity of man is that we are evil, that we are sinful. Apart from God, we're all wicked. And Jesus says, listen, you're sinners, you're evil, and you know how as evil people or sinful people, you know how to provide for your children, you know how to put a roof over their head, you know how to get them clothes, you know how to take them to, on trips, you know how to take care of them. If you as evil people or sinful people can do this for your children, 
He says then in verse number 11, How much more shall your heavenly Father, the one that's not evil, the one that is perfect and whole and righteous, how much more shall your heavenly Father, which is in heaven, give good things unto them that ask him? Oh, a good father will want to do anything for his kids. This is amazing to think that for these children, that our children, that we know that dad will take care of us, but to know that our heavenly father wants to do more than even I can do as a father. And I know my dad and mom, and through life, things were tight at times as children, teenagers of five children. But man, my dad and mom would sacrifice, sacrifice greatly for us and want us to have the best things we could have, the things that we needed. And I never forget, you know, we didn't ever have two fancy sneakers. But I know every year when we came to basketball season, we would ask, you know, we would come up to the ball season. Dad would allow us to go pick out a decent pair of sneakers, Nike or Adidas or Reebok. And that was a big deal because the rest of the year we had cheap, no-name sneakers. They had to last the whole year. But Dad wanted to do for us. If we were hungry and said, Dad, can I have this or that? He wanted to because he loves his son. But as good as dad has been to me, or as good as your father's been to you, think about that God even is better than that. So let's look at tonight, we'll look at three things, asking, giving, and receiving. Let's think about the asking. Once again, it's normal for children to ask their parents for things. From the day that a child is born, they need their parents. When that little baby is brought into this world, and that baby's placed into the mother's arms, and shortly after that, that baby immediately already is crying out, asking for food. The mother begins to nurse that child, or that baby cries out for a love and attention. A baby can't ask by, by texting something on the phone. Mom, can you bring me home a coffee? Or dad, can you bring me home a, a, a hamburger and fries? A, child can't, a baby can't pick up the phone or a, a, child can't, or a baby can't come up to dad and say, Dad, I need 20 bucks. So how does a baby communicate in asking? They ask by crying. Sometimes we can't stand the crying, but that's a good thing because that's how they communicate to us. They cry because they're hungry. They cry because they had a dirty diaper. Or they cry because they're tired and they want to be held. And so that child asks mom or dad and cries and cries and they're asking, please get me out of this diaper. Or the baby cries and cries because it's thirsty and hungry, wants food. And so from the earliest age, our children, the babies are asking in that way. Then maybe think about a child, elementary child, they begin to ask. They ask for food or clothes to be cleaned or direction in something in life with homework. They, 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 they ask for protection and help. You think about the teenage years and, and now it seems like the teenagers are asking for more things, bigger things, money and more food. And they ask about going to a friend's house and sometimes they come and ask for guidance in their life. Babies ask for things by crying. Kids ask by asking it over and over and over and over again. And then teenagers, I think, is a little bit different. They ask with a proposition in mind, right? If I mow the yard, can I go to my friend's house? If I keep my room clean for two weeks, can you buy me this new video game? So there's a lot of different ways that children would ask a parent. Children ask because they are in need of things. Your little five-year-old, your 10-year-old, even your 15-year-old. He doesn't have a full-time job. He doesn't have a salary. He's not bringing in fifty dollars or $60,000 a year. And so he asks you because he's dependent upon you, mother or father, because he doesn't have money. So they ask for things because they need. Most times it's impossible for them to obtain their own food or their own clothes or, or sneakers or something like that. So why do they ask? Because they need something. Who do they ask? They usually ask father, mother. And how do they ask? Sometimes they ask over and over repeatedly. Sometimes they ask with tears. They're crying because they're burned about something they maybe they need. Maybe not something that they would have like a possession, but, uh, but, but, uh, but something they need from you. Maybe they ask quietly in a quiet voice. Can I please go to my... Or maybe they yell, I need this now. Maybe they beg, but there's a lot of different ways that a child asks a mother or father. In these verses, there's a progression in this asking. Verse 7 and 8, he says, ask, seek, and knock. Verse 8, for one that asketh, receiveth. He that seeketh, findeth. He that knocketh. There's a progression. He goes from asking, and then a little more intense to seek, then to knocking. He's 
trying to, to, Jesus trying to get us to see that asking is all right and persistently asking and, 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 and begging in a sense and asking over and over that God will do something. As you know, as your children, the way they ask, if your children are grown, you know how they've asked through time and how you want to give it. That's what God wants to do for us, the asking. What do we ask from God the Father? Think about areas of our life that, that we ask things for. I think about tonight when it comes to salvation. Now God gives us that gift freely, and we'll look at the giving here in a minute and look at how God is going to give when we ask. But we can ask for salvation. We can ask Jesus to be our Savior. Remember the man there in Acts 16? And he was at the prison guard, and Paul and Silas were in the prison at midnight praying and singing to God, and, and, the, and the earthquake happened, and, and all the chains, were, they were loosened, and the, and the prison doors opened up, and the prison guard's ready to take his own life, because if they escaped as prisoners, that prison guard would die. And Paul says, we're still here. And that prison guard said to Paul, sirs, what must I do to be saved? He asked the question of them as the preachers, but, but really, God, what do I do to be saved? He asked, and Paul said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Romans chapter 10 and verse 9, that if thou shalt confess thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Romans 10, 13, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord, we're asking, we're calling, we're begging on the name of the Lord, shall be saved. So we as children, of before we get saved, we ask God to save us. We ask Jesus Christ to be our Lord and Savior. We ask Jesus to forgive us of our sins. We ask Jesus to, to, to take us to heaven. We ask him for salvation. We ask him for the Holy Spirit. We ask him for the Holy Spirit. In Luke chapter 11, I want you to look there because this is a very similar passage here. It's the same storyline and Jesus speaking about giving. In Luke chapter 11, in verse number 11, 12, 13, For if a son shall ask of any of you that is a father, will he give him a stone? If he asks for a fish, will he, will, will he for a fish give him a serpent? He even goes a step farther. If he asks for an egg, will he give him a scorpion? If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask him? When we get saved, we get indwelled. We get indwelled by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit comes to live inside of us. But I believe there is a filling of the Holy Spirit daily in our lives. And there's things that can hinder the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit work in my life. So often unbelief or pride or some form of sin or selfishness will hinder the Holy Spirit or grieve the Holy Spirit. I think you would agree we need the Holy Spirit. I know daily I pray and say, God, please, I'm asking you, fill me with the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, control what I say. Holy Spirit, control what I think. Holy Spirit, control what I do. Tonight when I come to this pulpit to preach, I want the Holy Spirit. And I can ask, it tells me in, in Luke chapter 11, for the Holy Spirit. And then we ask for supplies. James chapter 4, verse 2, the latter part of the verse, it says, Ye have not because what? Ye ask not hey we can ask for supplies we can ask for things from clothing to house to our house to food to to many things in life that we would say would be essential to live we can ask for those things just like a child would come and ask for something a couple uh stories here along the line of asking a cartoon picture a little boy kneeling in prayer obviously disgruntled with the results of his prayers he was saying aunt harriet hasn't got married uncle hubert hasn't any work and daddy's hair is still falling out i'm getting tired of praying for this family without getting any results and sometimes maybe that's how you fail with your prayers but at least he was asking when Hudson Taylor was sailing to China to begin his missionary work, his ship was in great danger. The wind had died and the current was carrying them uh, towards sunken reefs, and, which were close to island inhabited by cannibals. So close they could see them building fires on the shore. Everything they tried was to no avail. In his journal, Taylor recorded what happened next. The captain said to me, well, we have done everything that can be done. A thought occurred to me and I replied, no, there is one thing we have not done yet. What is that? He said, he inquired. They had not asked yet of God to help and protect them. Listen, tonight, are you asking your heavenly father 
for things in your life. Matthew 21, 22, it says, In all things whatsoever ye shall ask in prayer. 1 John 5, 14, and this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. John 14, 13, And whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do. Matthew 7, 7, we've already read this. Ask and it shall be given you. Seek and knock. John 16, 24, Hitherto have ye asked nothing in my name. Ask and ye shall receive. James 4, 3, it says, ye ask and receive not, because ye ask amiss. You're asking all over the place, but ask specifically. James 1, 6 through 8, talks about, but let him ask in faith. Tonight, are you asking in prayer? God wants his children to ask, just like a child would ask you for extra money for camp, or, 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 or money to go get an ice cream, or ask for a new pair of shoes because there's holes in their shoes, or ask for a new pair of jeans because they're all torn up, and you want to give it as a father. Listen tonight, our Heavenly Father is waiting to hear from his children. All we have to do is ask. We see the asking, but we see number two, the giving. The giving. Jesus says if we ask, we will receive. How do we receive? Oh, there's one in this story, the great one that's the giver. There has to be a giver to receive, doesn't there? So here your child comes along and says, hey, I need 20 bucks for the fair. My friends are going to the fair, and I want to go along. I need 20 bucks. And so the child asks. You have your ask, the one that is asking. Then you have the one that's the giver. Somebody has to give the money. Somebody has to provide, and most times in a family, that's dad and mom. It should be. But in the Christian life, that giver, the one giving, is our Heavenly Father. The greatest giver of all times is our Heavenly Father. The giver in this is God Almighty. God knows how to give us the right kind of gifts. We already said it a little bit earlier ago, but here's a father that's a good dad, but in himself, he's not good at all. He's evil because he's a sinner, but he can even give good gift. He can even give a decent gift. But how much greater is your father want to give the right kind of gift? The giver doesn't ever give the wrong kind of gift. God, the father, doesn't ever give us a gift like a stone or serpent or scorpion. He's going to give us the right things. And the father gives good things to them that ask him. From the beginning of our lives, God has been giving us stuff. Maybe tonight we need to think more of just being a thankful person, a thankful child to our Heavenly Father. From the moment you're born, God gave you physical life. He gave you air to breathe. He gave you parents to care for and a family. He gave you shelter, a house. He's given you so much food. He's given you the opportunity to live in America and have the freedom to go to a church, a Christian school, to live in a, a Christian home. He's given you education. He's given us recreation where we can play games and go on trips and enjoy life. God has been so good, and he? What a father that we have and all these things he gave. But as we think about spiritual gifts tonight, going back to us asking for salvation let's think about the one that gives it let me make a little connection here once again here's this evil father that if a child asked for a piece of bread would he give him a stone or the other things we talked about as we think about salvation tonight i think about what the world the world's father tries to give in salvation what god gives in salvation is wonderful isn't it so here you come and you ask, Lord, save me. Be merciful to me, a sinner. I'm asking you to save me of my sins. Forgive me. Take me to heaven. And his gift is so much greater than any man can ever give. God's gift of salvation is better than any man's gift of any form of salvation. Man's gift of salvation or man's way of presenting salvation is that you have to work for it. If you have to work for something, it's not a gift now, is it? So this father on earth that tries to do something nice, God outdoes what he does always, doesn't he? And definitely in salvation, man says, all right, work for this. If your goods outweigh your bad, then maybe you can have heaven. If you get dunked or sprinkled or, or splashed in the baptism waters, then maybe you'll be forgiven your sins. You take of the cup and drink of the grape juice and, and the crackers, you take communion, then maybe you'll be saved. Listen, God's giving ways of salvation are much better than anything man ever came up with. Man's way says you have to work for it. Man's way is not always eternal. Man's way is you can lose something. You can lose it. Man's way of salvation is it's not for all, is it? There's a select group. 
Look, what's God's way of salvation? What is God's way of giving to those ones that ask? What is the Father's ways of giving? God's way or the Father's way of salvation is that it's free. Because it's a gift. John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. God's way of salvation is that it's free. John 3, 16, Romans 6, 23, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ the Lord. God's giving ways, the Father to you, was a free gift of salvation. It didn't cost us anything, but it cost his son, Jesus, everything, didn't it? God's way of salvation is it's eternal, eternal life. You can't lose it. The moment you got saved, your eternal life began that very moment, that very day, back in 1988 for me. I'll be in eternal life someday in heaven, but my eternal life began so many years ago. God's way of salvation is whosoever. It's not just a select group. His way of salvation. So you see, God's gift, the Heavenly Father's gifts are always much better than even what man can do. We see the, another thing that God gives. The giver likes to get, that gives us the Holy Spirit. We already read that. In Luke eleven thirteen. 13, God especially loves to give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him. So why aren't we asking him? Some days I go through life and I struggle and I feel like I'm butting my head against a wall and I'm getting aggravated and I'm in a bad mood and, and I'm like, man, what is wrong with me? And I'm, stop for a moment. And I didn't ask for the Holy Spirit's power today. I've been really working on that in my life. I'm not perfect at it, but I've been really working on that every morning. I want the Holy Spirit today. I want the Holy Spirit to have all of me today because I want the fruits of the Spirit to come forth. You can ask that and the giver wants to give you the Holy Spirit. God gives us also many supplies. Philippians 4, 19. But my God shall supply all your needs. Oh, God wants to do many things for us. If you're short on money and you ask, God wants to be the giver and he wants to supply our needs. If it's bills that need to be paid, if it's food that needs to be provided, if it's clothes for your family, God wants to meet the needs. He's our giver. If it's healing. In James 5.15, it says the prayer of faith will heal the sick. You say, well, man, I've got a family member that's sick. I'm not feeling good. I'm, I hate the way I is. Well, listen, maybe it's not God's will always to heal, but maybe sometimes it's just, we're not asking. If we ask the giver, the one that likes to give, the Father will hear, and he will heal. heal. What else does God give us when it comes to supplies? Our physical needs, uh, things we need uh, as far as possession, but healing. What about wisdom? James 1 5 says, If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that give it to all men liberally and upbraideth not, and it shall be given to him. You say, Boy, one of the supplies I need, something I need from God, is wisdom. We all need that, don't we? So much. If you're a parent at all, I need wisdom, right? If you're in a position of leadership at all, I need wisdom. And in the positions we're in, we're working people every day and decisions need to be made. I am learning more and more each day. I need wisdom. That's something I can get from my Father. Just by simply asking, God wants to give it liberally. What about forgiveness? You know, God wants to be the giver of forgiveness. We get saved. God saves us of all our sins, but daily. 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all righteousness. You did something wrong today. You broke God's law. You messed up your sin. Thank God today you can come and ask for forgiveness, and the giver will give you forgiveness. Isn't that an amazing truth? So God wants to give us. Let me say this. God can outgive the government Oh, God can heal better than any doctor. God gives us greater wisdom than any counselor. And God forgives better than any priest could ever forgive. I'm thankful tonight for my Heavenly Father that is a giver. Number three, we see the receiving. The receiving, we see back in the text, verse number seven, it says, And ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened to you. For everyone that asketh, receiveth. And everyone that seeketh, they're going to find. And all those that knock, it shall be opened. The receiving. Tonight, do you gladly receive these things from God? Do you receive what the giver gives? Sometimes I struggle receiving or accepting things. Maybe it's a guy thing. Maybe you guys aren't that way. But sometimes I, I struggle. I feel bad at times when people do so many nice things. 
We have Teachers Appreciation Week, and people just go over and beyond to, to give us gift cards and thank you notes. And sometimes I feel so bad and don't almost don't even want to take it because I feel bad as the receiver. Or sometimes what my wife or my children will do for me, or so many of you will come and give us nice gift cards and Christmas presents. And I had a birthday recently, and sometimes I feel guilty about all that you spend on us or on me. And sometimes I'm thankful for it, but I sometimes struggle as a receiver from people that are giving or things that God wants to do. Sometimes, let me say this, people have the opportunity, all men have the opportunity to be saved, but not all people receive salvation, do they? If you go out soul winning at all, and every week of my life, if it's Thursday nights or Fridays or Tuesdays or whenever I'm out, but every week of my life, there's four or five or six people or maybe a dozen people that we present the gospel, we tell them who the giver is and that he can give you eternal life. And they reject that gift, don't they? And they never receive. They never accept salvation. Some people reject wisdom, God's wisdom. They don't receive the wisdom that God wants to freely give. Some reject God's forgiveness. Why do people reject and not receive? Many times when it comes to salvation, they reject because they're full of pride. But let me say this to us Christians that have been saved and God's our Father. Sometimes God gives us gifts and, and, and in a sense we don't receive right because we're ungrateful for the gift. I hope we are grateful for all the wonderful gifts God has given to us and we gladly receive them. Oh, it costs the Father, the giver, a lot for us to have what we have in salvation. It costs Jesus everything. I hope tonight as the receiver... Today when I received some gifts from my children or my birthday a few weeks ago, I received gifts from my wife or my parents or several of you. I had one of two choices. I could say I'm going to reject this gift or I can say I'm going to accept this. Even though at times it makes me feel sad, I accept that gift because I'm thankful that you did that for me or that my family did that for me. And I hope tonight we are so thankful and so grateful to the Heavenly Father for all the things, all the gifts, all the good. If it's physical things, if it's spiritual things, healing, money, you name it. We've got a great God that has given us beyond what we've ever could even ask for. And I hope we'll gladly receive every gift and be so grateful as his children. Tonight, as we finish up the, pat, the story here, the message, we all have an amazing Heavenly Father that has done so much for all of us. We need to be thankful for the giver. A couple of questions I'd like to ask you. Are you grateful for all that God has done? The most happy person in life is the thankful person. The most happy person in life is the one that's grateful. And I know... When I'm not happy or I'm grouchy or I'm doing this or that, and it's usually because I'm complaining or I'm not contentful. It's amazing what praising will do. And if we would just stop in a given day and say, wow, God has been good to give me a dad and a mother and they've met a lot of my needs. But even greater than my dad, what he can do, I have a heavenly father that has even done so much more. And if just every day I just take time to be grateful for a heavenly father, listen, it changes the person you'd be. You stop being so moody and depressed and downhearted and complaining and whining. Listen, we get to be grateful to our Heavenly Father for all he's done. We're different people. Number two, do you ask God and depend on him or leave him out of your life? One thing that can be a danger of maybe making good money or being so smart or being so gifted at some things is sometimes we feel like, I don't really need God. I got this taken. I got, got control of this. I've got a good job. My needs are met. I feel like I'm a wise person. I know how to figure this out. I don't need God. That's a dangerous place to be. We all need God. And so do you ask God to depend on him or leave him out of your life? Do you gladly receive from God? And when God gives us something, do we gladly receive and are we grateful for the gifts that the giver gave us? And lastly, let me say this. Earthly gifts will not last, but God's gifts are eternal. The Bible tells in 1 John that he that doeth the will of God will abide forever. So parents, let's all spoil our kids to death. We'll love them, do things for them. But be careful about spoiling them so much that they anticipate Christmas and birthdays and every time they go out to the store that we're going to do something for them because those things are just temporal and those things will not last. And let's emphasize the importance of heavenly gifts that God has given to your children because those are the gifts that last forever. We have a wonderful Father, don't we? Let's close our eyes and bow our heads, please. Good things from the Father. Hope today that you're grateful to your Father. Some of you, your dad's dead. He's in heaven. 
Some of your dad's not in your life at all. I want to encourage all of you. You have a better dad than any dad you could ever hear have on this earth. You have a heavenly father that's creator of all things. I'm not going to ask, but maybe tonight there's some. You say, Brother James, I've been kind of ungrateful. I've kind of complained. I kind of whine and murmur. God's good enough to make it a sunny day, and I complain because it's too hot. God's good enough to make it rain because our grass is yellow and our garden's not growing, and I complain because it's raining. Listen, God does so many good things in one given day. When was the last time you just took time? I'm not talking about Thanksgiving Day or Thanksgiving week, but when is the last time you took just some time? I think it should be every day of our lives that we take time just to say, thank you, thank you, thank you, Father, for all the things he's done. Maybe now you need to tell God, I'm sorry, I've not been so thankful. I'm sorry, Father, that I've not appreciated your gifts. I'm sorry that sometimes I don't always receive them with a good attitude. Maybe tonight you haven't been asking. Maybe right now you're in a situation where you say, Brother James, I'm in trouble. If I don't go to God, I don't know where this is going to turn out. Well, ask tonight. God wants to hear. God wants to answer. God wants to give. Let's not leave him out of our lives. Let's not be Christian atheists where we live life and never even allow God to be a part of our life. Tonight, ask him. He wants to give. I hope we'll be grateful to the Father. Lord, please help us. Help me, dear Lord. You've worked in my heart in this sermon the last few days. About asking more, but Lord, when you do it, help me to be thankful and, and glad to receive gifts. Lord, sometimes I know I'm going to be self-sufficient, but Lord, at times you use people in our lives to provide our needs. And Lord, help me to know that's from you and be thankful and receiving. Lord, thank you for being so wonderful and giving me eternal life and giving me forgiveness and mercy and, and the Holy Spirit. And Lord, meet all my needs. Oh, you're such a wonderful Father. Help us to worship you daily in this area to thank you for being a good Father. Lord, work in hearts tonight. Help many to, the Lord, even right now, just take time to spend praying to you and thanking you. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's stand here, please. Let's just take a little bit of time to pray. There in your seat, maybe like to walk to the front, sit at a seat or at the altar. And just thank your Father tonight. You know, writing thank you notes is an important thing. Somebody gets you a gift, we try to write a thank you note to express our heart on a letter. Or maybe we say thank you so much and give our mom or dad a big hug because we're so grateful for that gift. Or maybe we say it in words, thank you. And we'll do that for a father and mother. We do that for individuals. But when was the last time that you took a good amount of time and just, just poured your heart out to God and thanked him? Maybe you write it down in a journal and just write down all the amazing things that God has done. Maybe that help you to appreciate him as a father. Tell him sorry if you've complained and murmured and whined about your life. All of us have it a lot better than somebody else in life. I know we all want better. I'm the same way. We want bigger and better, but we have a lot bigger and better than most people in the world. It's all because of our Heavenly Father. He's been good to us. Hope you'll be thankful tonight that you've heard a clear presentation of the gospel. So many people have never even heard the name Jesus. You better be thankful tonight that God has forgiven you of all the sins that you and I have committed. Hope we'll be thankful that God's mercies are new each and every day. Hope we'll just love on the Father tonight and be grateful for Him. Pastor. Hope you take all the messages to heart. That you don't just go to church for an obligation or in any way, just as a robotical religious ritual, but that you take every word from God's word to your heart, feed your soul, and give great pondering and consideration to that even after we leave the building. Let's pray together. Trustees, be sure to come up in the choir loft. Let's pray, please. Father, thank you for the day, this morning, tonight, opportunity to be together. I pray that you would help us to not just go through a uh, a habit of life of being in the house of God, but truly that we'd have a hunger and long to be in the house of God. And though we know it's important in our lives, and we pray that uh, each and every time there's services that you would just stir us to be at the house of God. Thank you, Brother James, and the sermon we heard tonight. Thank you for giving us words, for thy word to help us be what we need to be so as to please you. In Jesus' name.